Are you tired of using too many tools and too many websites to deliver your instruction? Well, Pear Deck might be the answer for you. Stick around and we'll show you how to use it with Google and with Microsoft. So today we're going to be learning about Pear Deck and how to use it in Google Slides and also Microsoft PowerPoint. So here I am in Google Slides. And from here, I would go to Add-ons. If you've already purchased it, you might have it right here. But if you haven't, you can go to Get Add-ons and it will be the second one because it's the second most popular download right now. But if it's not there, then simply type in Pear Deck and you can search it just like that. So go ahead and click on it and then install it. Continue. Check that this is the account you want to use allow and done. So now you notice I have a window that opened up on the right called Pear Deck. So if this does not appear for you, you can reload your page and then go to add-ons, Pear Deck, open Pear Deck add-on. And there it is. Now let me take you into PowerPoint. So now I'm on PowerPoint online. So let me show you how to get the add-on for PowerPoint. So you would go to insert, and at the very end, you're going to go to add-ins and then you can go to the store. There's different ways. Type in Pear Deck. Add. Continue. So when you're in PowerPoint online, you would go to home and these dots right here and you would click on Pear Deck. And just like in Google, you could see that the Pear Deck window has opened on the right. If you're not already logged in, you can go to your login and you could set up your account. If you already have an account, you would sign in, accept, and here we are to set it up. Authorize and go back to PowerPoint. And here I am set up in PowerPoint. So earlier you saw me on Google Slides and here I am in PowerPoint. And they're essentially the same thing. You're just using two different platforms. So we're going to spend most of our time in Google Slides because all of the things we learned there can be transferred here. But we just wanted to make sure you knew how to get in in both areas. So here I am in Google Slides and we're going to look to the right to Pear Deck. And let's just go through this in order. So if I lose, you just know I'm going in order. OK, so let's start with our template library. Go ahead and click on that. And you can see the different types of templates. You have lesson builders for beginning, during, and end. And you have learning development down here, which we'll go into, and subject areas as well. So let's start with our lesson builders. Let's go ahead and click on the first one, beginning. And these are the different templates that you can use. But before clicking on it, you can hover over the question mark and it tells you what it is. So text, students type a response to your prompt on their devices. This one's a drawing one, students will draw. And here's draggable right here. Students drag icons anywhere on the screen. So there's different types. So don't be worried about trying it out because you could always delete it and alter it as you see fit. But before I bring it in, I want to tell Google where I want to put it. So um, maybe, maybe I want that one. So I want it in the very beginning before I even start. So I'm going to click before that. I'm going to click on this once and now we're going to wait. And you can see that that slide was just inserted. So when the kids go on, they're actually going to write a response to this question. What did you learn from the homework? Now, can I change the question? Absolutely. You just click on it. And you can change the question. Do you like the graphic? If you don't, you could simply delete it. Or you could put it back. Okay, this bottom part, some people don't like to have this bottom because sometimes it might cover something that you need. Do not delete it because if you delete it, the kids won't be able to interact with this slide. So if you don't like it here, feel free to move it. You can move it somewhere else on the side or you can even move it off the slide. If you don't want the kids to be able to see it, you don't want it to block anything, that's fine. But it has to remain here because that's how we know that it's an interactive slide with Pear Deck. OK, so do not delete it. Move it anywhere you want, but don't delete it. Just know that. OK, and what if I decide I don't want the slide? I don't like how it's set up. I could simply delete it as well. OK, or if you want, you can move it around 
a different portion of your presentation, okay? So let's go back and see what else we have. So we were at beginning, we have activities for during, and you can see there are different types of activities here. There's multiple choice, and again, we can hover over the question mark. Students choose an option, dragging, they can actually draw here, lots of different options here, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and go to mine and stick one in right here. So let's go ahead and try this one. I'm going to click right here, and then I'm going to add this true and false just by clicking on it, and there it is. So let's change our question. The water cycle has four stages true or false and here we are and we have our end of lesson ones as well so lots of different options here maybe we're checking how they're feeling actually this would be a great one even for the beginning of your slides maybe you want to check how they're feeling for the day let's go ahead and throw that one in maybe i'll put it at the end the very end of my slides so here you go now you can check how they feel at the end of your lesson so you can go through all of those. There are so many options there. Let's go ahead and go to the next portion, learning development. This one is critical thinking. And there are a lot of slides here that help your students go deeper into your instruction. So here's one I observe, I wonder. They can draw, they can interpret, draw different conclusions, explain. The possibilities are endless here. This next one, social emotional learning. This one is a big one, especially right now when most of the time we can't see our kids in person. And usually in person, we can see how they're doing by their body language, but that's hard to do, especially if you don't see them in person. So here are things that you can do to check on them and see how they're doing. We can do a stress check. What is filling your bucket stay and what's draining it? Let's go ahead and take a look at one of these. And here it is. And you can see over here, it didn't end up where I wanted. I could simply just drag that where I want it. So what is filling your bucket today and what's draining it? And students can actually draw on this slide. We have a stress check as well. Lots of great things to go through. Here's another one, stress check. This is an important one. I think we should be asking teachers this all the time and the students as well. So here they drag the icon so they can actually drag where they are. Now let's go down to the bottom subject area. So if you're teaching a certain subject, you could simply go here into the subject that you teach. Here's a great one. I know a lot of our teachers, especially those of the littles, feel like they're very limited on their resources. But when you click here, you could see so many options and templates to use. You could do operators. And again, these are templates, so you could actually change the numbers and the text and the pictures so you can tailor it to whatever you're teaching. Okay, we have graphs here. We have maps, text, time, so many things in here. And then of course, our other subject matter. And we're not gonna go through all of that. I'm sure you can go through that on your own. So that is how we use the templates. It's simple, right? So what if we're starting from scratch? So let's go ahead and create a new slide. Here it is, I'm just gonna stick it at the top. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> so here I am in a blank slide and I want to start from scratch. So let's say I want text. So let's click on that. So here the students would actually type in a text response. So we would update the slide. And here we are, students would know that they would type in their response, but I would also have to put in a question. So, and I would type in that question. And if you didn't have that, you would insert text box, okay? And then you would type in your question. Or you could put a picture, whatever it is that you want your students to respond to, okay? Let's try another one. So you have multiple choice as well. So you can ask questions and then they can choose multiple choice. Numbers, websites. This one is awesome because you actually embed the website into your slides. So instead of 
um, sending your kids to other websites, it actually does it inside, which is amazing because as we know, when you send your kids out to other websites, sometimes it's hard to bring them back, especially if it's something like YouTube. You send them out there and then you never get them back. <laughs> so this is great. So you embed it actually in your slides so they don't go anywhere. They have the ability to draw. Maybe you have a picture of a worksheet that you want to put in here and then they can draw directly on it. We also have something called draggable and I wanted to demonstrate this one because you might be unsure what this means. So I'm going to go ahead and find an image that I would want them to drag onto. So here's an image that I found and now we're going to click on draggable. Just follow the prompts. So here in draggable we have a few options here. So maybe I just want to ask one question here. So I can just leave it like that. Or if you want another one, you can add other ones as well. I'm just going to ask one. You could choose a different color if you want. Um, I suggest not choosing the color of the picture <laughs> because they won't be able to see it. But I don't see anything red in there, so I'll keep that. And then you can also change the size. And then we'll click update. And here we are. Students will drag the icon, but these kids don't know what to do. So you can give verbal instructions if you're doing this live, or you can put your question at the top. So let me go ahead and move this so I can actually add a question. Drag the icon to the precipitation stage. Drop, drag that here so they could see. There it is. Drag the icon to the precipitation stage. There you go. And so now the kids will know what to do. They'll be able to drag that red icon to wherever precipitation shows. Okay. Let's go ahead and go to the next part. So if you do have a premium account, you have this add audio to slide, which is amazing because we know that as teachers, we repeat instructions over and over and over and over. But if you add audio to the slide, then they can click on it as many times as they want to hear your instructions. So let's try adding it to this slide. And here we are. So we can record directly or you can upload. So if you have some sort of audio file that you want the kids to listen to, maybe a podcast, maybe a music recording, you can upload it. But if you are simply just giving them instructions or reading to them or whatever it is, then you can record. So I'm just gonna scoot this over so that I know what I'm recording. I'm going to record the directions on this slide so that in case they have a hard time reading it, then they can click this and they could hear me reading it to them. Drag the icon to the precipitation stage. And from here you can resume, you could delete it, you can save it, it's entirely up to you. So I'm just going to save it. And from here you could listen to it if you want, or you could decide to delete it, it's entirely up to you. I'm going to add the audio to the slide. And now here it is. The kids can click on that as many times as they want and they can hear you reading instructions or whatever it is that you want them to listen to. So as you can see, there are so many other things to explore here in Pear Deck. But before we do anything else, we just wanted you to make sure that when you share this with your students that you do not press the present button. Because if you click present from Google, you're simply just going to present the slides to them. It's not going to be connected to Pear Deck and this is not going to work. So do not do that. <laughs> if you want to actually present using your Pear Deck tools that you just added, then you have to start lesson. I'm gonna repeat that again. Do not click present, <laughs> start your lesson. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and show you what happens. So from here you have some options. You could actually do student paced activity where it allows them to go on at their own pace. So they can go through the slides as quickly or as slowly as they want. They can answer your questions as they see fit. So they could do this asynchronously without you. This next one is instructor paced activity. So they're actually going to be moving through the slides with you. They can't go forward or behind. You are going to control that completely. And when they come to slides where it requires a response, they can go ahead and respond and you can see it in real time. And then when you feel they're ready, then you can move on. So you can choose how to start this for the kids. All right, well, I know that was a lot of information. Hopefully that was more than enough to get you started. And if you need any help, please let us know.